All right, so let's talk about what SEM actually does. Theory testing, are you sick of me saying that yet? So we can look at measurement configuration and confirm it or change it and see if there's better ways to configure items into latent structures. And it also does relationship confirmation. So we can look at, is there a relationship? Does one lead to the other? Um, we can take that further and go into mediation and moderation effects. We can also do full group comparisons. So we can see, does this entire model change by male and female? Or by English versus Spanish versions of your survey? It also can do longitudinal models and multi-level models, but we are not going to be covering that in our class. So latent growth curve analysis is actually combining the full SEM model and an HLM model. So there's three types of models that we're going to be talking about. The first one is confirmatory factor analysis. So here, in this example, we have two latent variables that each have three items or three indicators underneath them. We can do path analysis. So these are observed variables. They are not latent. And we have two observed variables predicting a third observed variable. We can also combine the two into what I'm calling the full SEM model, where we have three indicators for each of these latent ideas, and we're saying, do these two latent ideas predict this latent idea? So many advantages of SEM. First of all, it corrects for measurement error. It also helps establish content validity of indicators. It can help us inform our construct validity so are the constructs as valid as we think they are um, based on our established theory? It tests models of our expected relationships. And we have to really think carefully about what theory and hypotheses we are using. If you put a line between two things, why is that line there? Should it be there? Should it go this direction? Should it go that direction? All of those decisions. And it actually gives us really nice generalizable estimates. We can do this with any system of linear equations. Um, and there are nonlinear effects as well that you could include. And what we're doing is we're testing direct, indirect, mediator, moderator, models, and any combination of those all at the same time. We can also help establish construct comparability in cross-cultural work. So that's kind of going back to the idea of, is the model working for all? Disadvantages, these are big ones. It is really complex to specify. It is less well understood by others. So trying to explain what it is that you are doing, it can be a bear and very, very hard to do. It requires pretty large samples, although we may not be talking about thousands. It might just be three to 500, depending on what you're trying to do. The software is not user-friendly. I can't emphasize that enough. None of them are. And the focus is on model fit. This is different because we're not talking about a local fit. So does this part fit and this part fit? We're also not talking about individual fit. So does this model fit for this person is not something that we're asking. One can know just enough to be dangerous. So there are a lot of different SEM programs out there. I have used Lyceral, I have used M+, I've heard good things about R SEM packages, but we're gonna be using Amos for this class. I chose Amos because it is an SPSS add-on. There is a graduate package for SEM, for, yes, for Amos. And it's the most visually appealing and less syntax related. So instead of worrying about commas, we're gonna be worried about lines and zeros. It's the same, it's just different. Speaking of symbols in the model, go ahead and write this stuff down and just memorize it and we'll come back to it as we continue. But straight arrows represent direct effects. So one is leading to the other. Curved arrows represents correlational relationships. And if you think back to correlation, 
There is no established IV or DV. They're bidirectional. They're equal. If we have a rectangle or a square, these are observed variables. They're also called indicator variables. And if we have an ellipse, so a circle or oval, that is representing a latent variable. So let's look at a few examples. Here I have a circle. So I, this is a latent variable with 15 indicator variables, 15 observed items that are going to lead to this bigger idea. You will also notice that there are error terms, so little circles, on each observed variable. So each indicator item has its own error term. Over here, I have four different latent variables that they have correlations between all of them, but I don't have any direct effects between these right now. So this is a measurement model. We're testing the idea of do these items all load like we would expect on this latent variable. These are all a priori hypotheses. These 15 items should load here. Um, these two items should load here. Structural models are a little different. So in this, I'm starting with a path analysis. So these are all observed variables. And this is a causal effect. So these should flow from left to right like we read, in English at least. And these are causing this. So this is our final dependent variable. So we have behavior being predicted by intention. But intention is predicted by attitude and social norms. So for those who want to see the full equation, here's how this works. I have my x4 behavior is being predicted by three different things. But x3 has its own equation that's being predicted by x1 and x2. And in fact, x2 has its own equation that's indicating the relationship between x2 and x1, this guy right here. And of course, we can put them all together and get crazy. Pause for a minute and think about this. So here we have capability being predicted or being indicated by two different items. Process is being indicated by three. So these are all measurement pieces. And then we have capability coming from process, knowledge coming from process. So process is predicting both of these. Knowledge is also predicting capability. So we've got a moderator, mediator thing happening here. This is also leading to content. This guy is being predicted by a lot of different things. And all of these are leading to performance. How cool is SEM? So really, we're looking at three variants that we're going to be talking about, at least for this class, of structural equation modeling. We're going to start with confirmatory factor analysis. Then we're going to talk about path analysis with observed variables. And then we're going to talk about path analysis with latent variables, combining the first two, in what I'm calling a full SEM model.